We're back now with more on Chelsea Clinton's big day. It's one of the most talked about weddings of the year. And as NBC's Nora O'Donnell reports, when it comes to the weddings of first children, there is plenty of history and tradition. For presidential children, White House weddings are an American tradition and their march to matrimony can become an affair to remember. When a kid gets married as part of a White House function, it becomes a big moment. Everybody wants to see the inside of what it's like in a family setting at that time. Today, it's Chelsea Clinton's turn to walk down the aisle. She's emerged. I mean, this is her moment in the spotlight. It's any bride's moment, but I think it's a wonderful time for us to take a look at what she has become over the time. These celebrations are as close to a royal wedding as it gets. And for the Clintons, Chelsea's big day comes with a lot of emotion. How do you think you're going to feel when you watch her walk down that aisle? Proud, grateful, wistful. Mm -hmm. I'll be thinking about the day she was born. So I'll be thinking about the first day of school. Chelsea's private ceremony has garnered a lot of public attention. But it's not surprising, recent weddings of presidential children have been super secret. Like when Jenna Bush exchanged vows with Henry Hager in 2008 at her parents' secluded ranch in Crawford, Texas. The wedding was uh, spectacular, it was all we could have hoped for. John F. Kennedy Jr.'s ultra-private ceremony was held in a simple one-room chapel on Cumberland Island, Georgia. Other presidential children welcomed the public attention. Lucy Bain Johnson's wedding in 1966 was live on television, watched by 55 million people. A grand White House reception followed with a 300-pound fruitcake. You felt real pain carving into that cake. You felt like you were cutting up a work of art. Trisha Nixon's wedding in 1971 was the first held in the Rose Garden. President Nixon then joked that they would need a seven-foot-tall cake just to feed everyone, including 600 journalists. But for Chelsea, the wedding is far from the White House and the cameras, as she joins a storied tradition of weddings in America's first families. For today, Nora O'Donnell, NBC News, Washington. Doug Weed is a presidential historian, the author of All the President's Children and the founder of Chelsea Clinton WeddingWatch.com. I wish I'd thought of that first. Doug, good morning. Nice to have <laughs> you on. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me what fascinates us about the Chelsea story. She has obviously not been first daughter for, for 10 years. She keeps a very low profile, even in the days leading up to this wedding. What fascinates her? I think. Uh uh, she's the ugly duckling who's become a beautiful swan. I mean, uh, she was the butt of uh, partisan jokes, cruel jokes. She was lampooned on Saturday Night Live, and she didn't answer back. There's nothing on record. Most of these uh, presidential children, I can find something they said to a friend in college or something. No response from her. And now here she is, uh, drop-dead gorgeous, getting married, and she's got the last laugh, and we, we like that kind of a story. You know, I think we all get the privacy thing, that even though you're in the public eye, some things like, like getting married are, are very private. Let, let's look back to the, the Jenna Bush wedding. Yeah. First of all, it wasn't held at the White House, which surprised a lot of people yeah. since her father was a sitting president at the time. Yeah. They kept that secret, but yet some information was fed to the press. How was that handled? Yeah, that uh, they let off a little steam. They had to. The, the, the events are so historic. Uh, but this was a post 9-11, uh, if you will, uh, wedding of a presidential child. And so we're in a new era and privacy is part of security. So it's not just a question of the personality of the bride. Now it's uh, unfortunately a necessity. And, and then some people think it's almost a right to, for the public to, to be led into these things. If you go back to Tricia Nixon, that, that one was on national TV live, wasn't it? It was, uh, it, there were live specials in the evening. Part mm -hmm. of it was, was uh, filmed and video. Videotaped. And imagine, uh, Lester, two-hour specials on the network in prime time in the evening. So, But the problem is, today, if you're a presidential parent, you don't want your child on the cover of Perry Match. You don't, you don't want people in a tea stall in Amman, Jordan, looking up and seeing uh, the story of your daughter's wedding. You want that privacy because that's part of security. And, and does some of it also recognize that we are in a much more 
24-7 internet tabloid celebrity driven media era. Absolutely and very good point. The sad thing is a lot of the, tra the traditions of these weddings and they are as your journalist pointed out these are royal weddings. We really we have no royalty. We don't even have nobility though we have pretensions from time to time. Those families come and go. So the children of these presidents these are the greatest social events in American history and some of those traditions are lost like one was you always invite the bride the previous presidential child who was married to your wedding and those continued pretty strong you saw here where uh, uh, Linda Bird Johnson took out a sword to cut her cake that was a tradition that started so uh, it's kind of sad and, to and see. then we just saw a picture of, of JFK jr. very very private wedding in that case <laughs> that's right uh, but even those are sometimes repeated patterns Robert Todd Lincoln's father was killed in an assassination and the American people backed off and gave him privacy the way they did uh, John and Caroline and he like uh, JFK jr. pulled off a surprise he got married a few weeks before the announced date in a private ceremony in a senator's home so it's interesting how history repeats itself we tend to make the same decisions if we're put in the same circumstance yeah well I'm, I'm hoping uh, Mark and Chelsea have a wonderful marriage I'm certainly probably good be glad to get past this uh, portion of the publicity <laughs> this is a great story because yeah. she's a survivor she's landed on her feet and I think this this uh, wedding is a milestone for the whole family that uh, uh, here's a marriage that has survived and strong here's a uh, presidency that's being viewed with uh, uh, more appreciation than it had in the past especially with the economy still struggling and here's a young lady who landed on her feet and is very resilient very interesting a good point Doug Wheat thanks very much for coming on this morning it was good yes. to talk to you up next